The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. So God is telling a particular group of people to gather themselves together. Right? Not everybody. That's the, the way America set up, they say we all supposed to gather as one. It says gather together a nation that's not desired. Right? What nation of people is not desired? What nation of people is at the bottom of society? Name one community where it's all blacks, where it's it's affluent, where you see no boarded up buildings, nobody selling drugs, nobody, no crack addicts, nobody drunk. Like this is no, we normalize this. This is not how we're supposed to be living our life. You believe in the God? You believe in the Bible? We gotta, we gotta do what it say do. We gotta come back to the Bible. We gotta gather ourselves under Christ. You want the kingdom of heaven? Let me show you how to get there. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Bring it out. Real quick. I know you got time. We all ripping and running. We got things to do. But we didn't take time out of our day to do the Lord's work to be able to show you how to get yourself right. This is love. Nobody else is doing this. Nobody else is doing this. Take a time out that day. We come from all over the city. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So it says, One good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. Because we all want eternal life, right? We don't want to die. Read. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So it's only one that's good as God, because we all are trying to get ourselves right, right? We all trying to do better. Read. But if thou will enter into life, if you want that eternal life, what's your name, sister? Huh? What's your name? Dajay. Dajay. If you want eternal life, read. Keep the commandment. You gotta keep the commandment. That's how you gonna get it. That's the only way. That is the only way how you're gonna be able to get the, the eternal life. Yeah. So let me show you a commandment. Let me show you one commandment. We start out with this. So it's our job. Let me get Leviticus 19, verse 17 first. I want to bring this out to you first. Because a lot of times when we show our people how to get right with God, they take it as we, you, you're being judged by somebody and so forth and so forth. But we actually showing you love. If you show, if you're talking to your friend and she messing around with a dude that, that ain't right and she not married and you tell her you got to get married, you got to do this, is that hate? Is that hate what you're doing? If, you t if you're correcting somebody, you're correcting your child. I'll just put it on that. If you had a kid, if you're correcting them, is that showing hatred towards them? If they're doing something wrong? That's all we're doing right now. So read that. Read the, what you got. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So we are commanded by God not to hate our brothers. But he's going to further describe what that hate means. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So we are commanded, does they, to rebuke. That means to correct our neighbor. That's a commandment. Did you know that? Because the, the way that we live in society, they always say, don't judge nobody, right? Man your business, stuff like that. But it says, we are supposed to rebuke our neighbor. We're supposed to correct our brother and sister, our mother. Whoever in error with God, we got to correct them. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. So you can't let that person stay in sin. If you see somebody smoking weed, selling drugs, you are entitled. It's a commandment that you say something to them about it. It, it is your business. Because if you don't say nothing, it's just like you did it. Read. <laughs> Sorry. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So you cannot bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So if you mad at somebody, you gotta squash that beef. Because you your prayers won't even be heard if you don't listen, if you don't squash your beef with that person. You got what I'm saying? So give me that Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It's the last scripture. I know you're about to get out of here. But it's a it's imperative that you hear these words today. It's imperative. It's not by chance that you came here and heard us. We came out here especially for you. God stopped you so you'll be able to hear this thing. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what is a what is a woman's garment? It says a man shouldn't put on a woman's garment, right? What is a woman's garment, you know? Yeah. We say what? Yeah. Tell it's oh, 
it's a, it's a dress. So if a man have on a dress, that's out of order, right? If we had on dresses, you would think that we was up here talking crazy because that is not what the Bible, the Bible, you have to dress manly and you have to dress femininely. So if I have on a dress, God is against cross-dressing. So read that again from the top. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. So look, and if I had a dress on, how would I be acting? Like a woman, right? Feminine. Real feminine talking, walk differently, the whole nut. So if you if you have it, it's just going it's a spirit behind the clothes that you wear. You ever thought about that? It's a spirit behind the clothes you wear. If you see somebody wearing something that's not pertaining to them, that doesn't belong to them, they put on that spirit. If a woman has on very revealing clothes, she act different, right? If a that's woman right. have on very modest clothes, if she dress covered down, she act differently. She's, but then people see that and they treat that person different. You ever notice that? Read that, read that for me. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what pertains to a man? So I said a dress pertains to a woman. What pertains to a man? You said pants? pants? No, man clothes. Man clothes, man clothes, but pants, right? Big pants are manly clothes. Before, back in the day, women never wear pants. It was uh, it was disgusting. That's something you would never would have saw. They have changed it. The society has changed things around. Well, now they even making it acceptable for a man to wear a dress. But everything is out of order. It's confusion going around. So when you have on pants, you have a it puts a manly spirit on you. It makes you more combative with a man. This is this is just the fact of the matter. Same thing with the with the man having a dress on. He takes on that spirit. It's the spirit behind the clothes. It seems like a small thing, but this small thing it, it goes to other levels. You know what I'm saying? So this is one thing that you could do. And I know you think this. A lot of, you read the scripture like God won't kill you for wearing pants. You don't think that, do you? And your mind that's what we've been taught because. We, but let me show you this. Go to Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Because you hear these things it's like, God love me no matter what, right? But it says in order to enter into life, you got to keep the commandments. If you're going to get eternal life, you got to do what the Bible says. If you don't do what it's saying, you're going to be put to death. It's really just that simple. From the smallest thing to the largest thing. Whatever you think in your mind is a small sin, you will be put to death for that. Give me that. Zephaniah 1 and 8. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is a day of judgment. Don't you see this world is collapsing? Do you see this? Look at it. You got to wear a mask right now just to go into a store, just to go outside your house. This is this is the first of many plagues that's going to happen. Bring it out. This is the first of many. We start, we, we, we're getting into the next level of where stuff is really about to get bad. Read. Now I will punish the princes and the king's children and such as are clothed with strange apparel. And such that are clothed with what? Strange apparel. No, regular apparel. Strange apparel. So if you got on strange apparel, that means you have on clothes that doesn't pertain to you. That is strange to God. That's an abomination to God. That is disgusting to God when he sees that thing. Just like how we, I see a, when we see a man with a dress on, it, just, it should be disgusting to you. The same thing need to be for women to have pants. And you'll be, your spirit will change. And the man will deal with you better. You'll be have a, a better, have a better chance to be able to find your husband. You want to get married one day? You want to be married? This is the step to get married. This is the step to get married, to get that respect that you want that you want to get, right? If you dressing like the rest of these women out here, you are not going to get the respect you deserve. I'm telling you straight up. There's nothing wrong with change. Like I said, if you want to get yourself right with God, keep the commandments and you'll be the first one. Matter of fact, give me Judah chapter 8, verse 24. Because uh, you got Judah chapter 8, verse 24. So I'm saying this. You got friends? Daja, you got friends? Right. So uh, you, would you consider yourself the leader out of your friends? Or you follow behind everybody else? You the leader? That's what I'm asking. So I'm saying. So if you change, what you think is going to happen to the rest of your friends? Exactly. Right, right. You in the spirit. Right, exactly. You in the spirit. So let's show this. Judah chapter 8, verse 24. The book of Judah chapter 8, verse 24. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to all brethren. 
friends. So let's show example to your friends, to the people in our family. Let's show example that if I can change, y'all can change. Because we all have to change. It all starts with you. If you want to see these things going better in our communities, it all starts with you. You can't be saying, well, this, this person not doing this, that person not doing this. It starts with you. Start at home. Read. Because their hearts depend on us. So they depend on us. You don't even know how much influence you have on another person. Hey, sis, you hear what I'm saying? You don't even know how important it is. And everybody walking by, like I said, God don't choose everybody. Read that. And the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. So all this stuff is resting upon us. We trying to get out these conditions. This is our power. This is our strength right here to get us out of here. If we don't do it, we're going to stay here at the bottom of society, walking around all this trash and people looking like they zombies. That's what's going to, it's going to stay like this. We used to it, but I'm telling you, it's sickening to see our people in this state. We come out here, it's, it's, it's plaguing my mind to see all of the sickness that's going around and nobody cares. Everybody is going with their life like like nothing's going on. Read what you got, Titus chapter 3. Read what you got, because we was all in this different mindset. I was out here, I was out here doing the same thing a lot of y'all was doing. But I chose to change my life. I heard it. I said, you know what? I wanted to get myself right. That's right. It's a process, though. You start with those pants, it's a sin like it's some small thing. But then when you move over to the next, you keep moving to more and more uh, commandments. And then you will see who is your real friends, like you said. You will see who's going to ride with you, who is really about this Bible, who's trying to keep these laws. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We were also sometimes foolish. What it means to be foolish? Give me first, give me your first time in chapter 13, verse 13. It says, let me, what it says, we were sometimes foolish. Right? Foolish is to go against what this Bible is saying do. That's foolish. Because do you not think God put this here for us to be able to live our lives properly, right? Do you know better than God? He made this whole earth. The sun, the moon, the stars, the grass, the birds, the animals, everything. But we know better. We thinking that we're going to be able to get ourselves out of the jam. By, by the knowledge that they told us in school or in the world. When this is the blueprint, everything is based off this. Read what you got. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. He said, Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Read. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God. He ain't keep the commandments. That's foolishness. To not keep God's laws, that you are acting foolish. And that's how most of us is. If you, they say if you're keeping the laws, you are square. Or you can still have fun within the parameters of this. The fun that the world has set up is designed to keep us in sin and we're going to die this way. Peace to peace. That's it. You, you have to reform your mind. You have to get out of these things because you got any kids? You do? Oh, so that's even more. It's even more imperative. You got to give me to the Romans chapter 6 verse 7. So it's even more imperative that you know this information because now you somebody's whole mindset is depending on you to get yourself right. Whole mindset. Everything that you touch, everything you show her, everything you put her around, if you have her around bad stuff, how do you think she going to end up? Right. It's, it's important. That's, that's what made me change me. I had my son, my, my, my wife was pregnant with my son, and I said, you know what? I can't do this stuff no more. I can't. All the stuff I did, I got to cut everybody off. Because now I know I'm responsible for him. If I don't get myself right, he, he, we're going to keep the curses going on. He going to go to jail like I did. You know what I'm saying? He going to do the things that I did. And, and, and I'm going to make it like it's okay to do it. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently until thy children. It says, and thou shalt keep these laws diligently to thy children. Read. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way. So you gotta be teaching them every day. You're teaching them how to get themselves right. Nobody told us. Nobody told us. But now, you see what I'm saying? What are we doing bad out here? And you see these people playing this music? That's to stop this word from coming out. But God's word don't come out void. We are going to be out here no matter what. We come out here to save souls. That's right. The, the demons come out here to stop the 
word of God. But it's not going to happen. Read, read what you got. And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So this is what we're supposed to do.
a whole bunch of things that you can eat. Pasta, salad, all different type of things you can do, right? Yeah. So these are some of the commandments on what you can do on the Sabbath day. No cooking and no working. So no buying and selling. Give me the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to so, sell. So where or any victuals on the Sabbath day is going into products. So on the Sabbath day, if they bring anything on the Sabbath day, read. That we should not buy of them on the Sabbath. So we're not supposed to buy on the Sabbath day. That's another commandment. So these are two, these are easy commandments that you're going to do. The pants. And then no buying and selling on the Sabbath day or working and cooking. Okay. Start with those. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.